Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Bitwig Studio and Music Production. This is lesson 5.03, and in this lesson, we're going to talk about how Bitwig handles third-party plugins and a few built-in features that is going to make controlling your plugins uh, perhaps a little bit easier if you're willing to just do a little bit of prep work from the start. So Bitwig handles plugins a little bit differently than most other digital audio workstations. They actually process the plugins separately from the rest of the application. And all that means is that if, for example, you run into a problem like I had and your plugin crashes, it won't crash the entire system. So the program won't go down. You won't lose any of your saved work. And really what this just means is you don't hit a distraction. You don't have an additional five minutes of having to boot everything back up and then try to find where you were at in the in the, in the uh, composition you were working on. And in my case, it was very easy to just click on reload plugin and it actually had saved the settings I was working with before. So what in another program might be a five or 10 minute uh, delay gets less into about 10 to 15 seconds. And so that way you can stay in your zone and you can uh, keep working on whatever it is you're working on. But let's actually jump into Bitwig now and look at this in a little bit greater detail and depth. So what you probably noticed is that I've been pulling in my plugins from just these folders. And these little black icons here with the little, I don't know, arrows are indicative of presets. Okay, and presets that I've saved. So if I pull up the span, for example, this is a preset I saved. If I pull up this VU meter solo Brian, that is my saved preset and you can see it here. And that differs from actually having to go in here, click on visual, attempt to scroll this down and uh, then pull this in and we'll see that the settings are also uh, different. Okay, so this one's minus 18, this one's minus 12. So there are some differences that have occurred. And if we looked at the back panel, there would be differences back here as well. Okay, so how does Bitwig handle plugins a little bit differently? For starters, let's talk about automation. Now, we're typically not going to be automating uh, this particular plugin, but the concept is simple enough. All you have to do is click on the parameter that you want to automate and then by default it will pop up right here so if i click on this we could see i could change this over time and maybe i can actually even do this let's see if this happens this is going to be interesting so if i play this back i don't know if this is going to work oh, wait looks so i clicked the wrong thing sorry i wanted to do um the skin color. This is going to be pretty neat if this works. I never really considered trying this. Oh yeah. So that's super cool. I There's not really a reason why you're ever going to want to do that, but to know that you can is pretty interesting. And so to avoid all the hassle and confusion of having to go in here, find the plugin you're working on and find the parameter, all you have to do is click whatever you want to adjust and it's going to pop up right there for you in the automation, which I think is uh, pretty handy and useful. Okay, the other thing that I like about working inside of this plugin box as compared to always having to work from the plugin window itself, and this is especially true with something like the tall tube, is how you actually have control over these knobs. So in the case of the tall tube, if I just pull up and down, it doesn't actually go like I want it to go. I want it to go all the way around. And so in this case, I actually have to grab it and turn it like an actual knob. A lot of other plugins don't do that. And when you work with freeware, you're going to find some knob responses to be not always to your liking, and they can be awfully frustrating from time to time. So the cool thing is that if I'm working here with the tall tube, I can go ahead and I can click on a parameter that I want to adjust, the drive, for example. And it's the very first thing I can control from here. And these work from 0 to 100, minimum to maximum. The only difference is if you have something like a button, so if I turn this hard on and off, for starters, it doesn't know the name, 
And if I just turn this up a little, it's gonna turn on as compared to the other ones which have a zero to 100. It's not like after 50 is reached, it then turns on. It actually is just assuming that a little bit is gonna be on and off, but that's not really too big of a deal because you can just imagine it like 100% on, 100% off. So it's a pretty easy workaround there. The one thing I don't like about working in this mode down here is that sometimes it's difficult to find what you need to adjust. And in other cases, there might only be three or four things that you are going to consistently be changing. And you also can't change two parameters at any one time. So a quick fix to this is to use the macro controls. And the macro controls are also going to mean that if you have a MIDI controller plugged in, and it's one of the ones that syncs up with Bitwig, and so we'd have all the lights here, if I was to turn a knob, and we'll imagine I turn this knob here, and I'm on this device, all I have to do is switch over to my next device, turn that same knob, and I'm going to impart any kind of changes uh, to the settings that I wanna make. And that's really, really cool because it speeds things up quite a bit, right? As compared to having to open up 20 different windows and not know how the knob response is gonna vary from one device to the other. In a lot of cases, you may not wanna set something up like this if you're working with an actual synthesizer and you're gonna be touching 100 different things. This isn't gonna work, but if you're like me and you like simple plugins that just have one or two little features and knobs that you need to control, I love working this way and love just working from the macro screen. And you can even have the plugin up if you want so you can see what's happening. So as an example here, I'll show you what I've done with the tall tube and I'll just click on effects. There it is. This is my default setting. To do this, I'm just gonna open up the macros, double click, Click the bottom one to bring it up and now we can see that i have a variety of controls so by default i like to have the amp on i like to have the hard off but for some reason there's a little glitch there i can control the dry wet and then when this gets interesting is with this drive control here so with the drive you can see that as i pull drive up my output comes down to try to compensate for that so i don't just instantly go in and go to any clipping and this way also i get a better sense of what the effect is actually doing because if we increase drive and the amplitude is going up we're probably going to like it more just because it's louder and at the very end i have a gain control uh, just to try to fix any last little issues going on there. And I don't have this mapped all the way. So you don't have to map every single thing 100% if you don't think you're going to need it 100%. And if I go in and I double click this and I click on the drive, for example, you can see that we've done two different mappings here. Okay, so let's quickly talk about how we would set this up from scratch for one of our plugins. Let's go ahead and grab maybe this guy here. This is our saturator from Klanghelm. And we only have like four major parameters. So this should work well for me in terms of what I actually want to control. I'm interested to see though, if I can change this across. Okay, I can do that. So maybe if I even want to do that, I'll make that my last one. This is going to be our meter mode. So I'm just going to go ahead and route this 100%. And you can see that it's changing there. So I'm just gonna, I'll leave that as its name of VU mode, but you can double click and change that. Okay, so now let's get into the different parameters we wanna map. I would like to map this trim control. So like the pre-gain. So as this is coming in, am I gonna turn the signal up or down? The issue is that if I use bipolar, it's not going to work. It's not gonna work in the traditional bipolar sense uh, like you would expect. So if I double click this, set it back to its default here and then adjust this to bipolar, attempt to route this 100. We can see that I can't actually turn it down. And that's not really a fault of Bitwig. It's just that the plugin integration isn't wise enough or smart enough to know that this is actually working like a bipolar switch. So I have to go back in here, turn bipolar off, and I'm going to right click here and clear the mapping. And so what I'm gonna do instead is pull the input trim all the way down to zero at the start. And now I'm going to map it and I'll go up to 100 in this case, or they work zero to one, but you could also imagine it 0% to 100%. I'm gonna call this pre-gain and I'm going to set this up to 50. When we save this, it's going to be remembered. And so it's not gonna start with a default of zero. 
which would then mean every time you opened it up, you'd have to pull it to 50. But now I know if I want to turn this up a little bit, I can. If I want to turn it down a little bit, I can. And then to go back to the default, I just have to set this at 50. Yeah, perfect. I really like that. Great. So now the next control I might want to set is I'm going to set the output control. And this is going to be a little bit interesting for you guys. I'm going to have to work it the same way. I'm going to set it down to zero at the start. And again, when I click it, that becomes the uh, top knob there. I'm just going to route this up 100 yet again. And now normally I would leave this set at zero, but in this case, or at 50%, I should say. But in this particular instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually turn it down a little bit because I know that when I really push the drive hard, I need to bring up my output to compensate. We saw that in the last video. Now, when I do this and I bring up my drive to compensate, there are certain settings like here in the three to like six region where it might still actually cause some clipping. I did this before and that was the issue I ran into. So by default, I'm gonna want the output down just a little bit. And I'm gonna call this post gain, meaning that we go into our pre gain here, then the drive is occurring. These two settings are impacting that drive. And then we have our output here. So I'm also trying to think logically um, left to right here as well, just for myself. So for me, I'm gonna just kind of default, maybe set this down a little bit. I'm gonna pull my drive down to zero. And that's going to be the next thing that I map. And for drive, I'm going to put this to 100 there. Okay, so when I bring it in, it's at zero, and I can go up all the way. But the also thing, the other thing I want to do, excuse me, is I want to increase the output subtly. Okay, I can always go back to post gain after the fact, but I want to know that as I'm increasing the drive a bit, I'm also taking into account the fact that we're limiting dynamic range and therefore needing to boost uh, if we want to have a fair comparison. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on output here. And for right now, let's actually just turn this down to zero. And I'm just going to bring this up maybe, I don't know, 30. That's going to work for me. Now let's put our output back to this setting. And now as I increase my drive, I'll also be increasing my output. And I could actually then take this a little bit further if I want. Let's just see how far it's going. Yeah, that's probably good. And then I still have these additional uh, post gain controls if I want to use them. Okay, then the last two knobs, I'm just going to do the ASIM mix and the uh, response here. So I'm going to go ahead, just set this up to 100. Great, and maybe by default, I want to have something more transparent. So I'll just go ahead and set that all the way right up to the top. And I'm actually just gonna call this transparency. And whenever you click and drag, we can actually see the full name here. I think I misspelled that, but as is life, right? That one I'm not too worried about. In this case, I'll just set it down to zero at the start. And then we also have our frequency re response at 50-50. It's going to be null. It's not going to have any impact. But then as I go from left to right, it will. So this one I am going to want to set up like I set up the uh, trim control. So I'll set this down to zero at the start and put that up to 100. Oops. And I'm going to want to set this right at the zero point. And this is interesting because this frequency response thing is actually going negative and positive. So I wonder if I try to set bipolar, if that's going to work. Why don't we try that just for fun? Fingers crossed. Nope, we're running into the same issue, unfortunately. So I'll go back in here and clear it and just start this over. My apologies, but we're learning together, right? So I'll set this all the way down to zero and just do what I did before. And we'll just go right to 50. And then it's having no effect as I pull it down and pull it up. Very, very cool. 
And we've already set the VU mode here, so we can change that all the way there at the very end if we want to do so. So we can play back our little sample here. Very, very cool. If I wanted to, I could obviously uh, continue to tweak this to get it just to my liking. But for now, I hope you guys can see and understand how this can be very, very helpful for you. And you know that you have the consistency of the knobs and you also can realize and understand that um, if there are parameters that, you know, if you're increasing one, you might want to decrease another. This is the way to go about doing that. So how are we gonna go ahead and save this? What I'm gonna do is I'm going to save this as, let's call it Brian Klanghelm Saturator. Okay, and then category, I'm gonna go ahead and select default, but you can put whatever you want. And I'm gonna call this uh, dirty, noisy, analog. That's probably good enough. And I can click OK. And now anytime I want to grab this IVGI, I don't have to go into effects and do it. I can just click effects here. And I know that this is my Klanghelm saturator. And I could do the same thing then with the compressor as well. And I'd call it Brian Klanghelm com compressor. And we're off to the races, which is super cool. And um, I hope that's been somewhat of a help for you guys. Again, this isn't going to work for every single device and plugin you have, but it will come in handy a lot of the time. And I love working from a default position or knowing what I'm going to have when I pull something in. Okay, so that's one of the reasons why I do this, and I think it can come in handy for you as well. Thank you so much for watching, and you'll hear from me again in the next lesson. Take care.